Hello and welcome to Photo Finds. It's the week of June 24th, 2014. I'm your host, Nick Russo, and let's go ahead and get started right away at Universal Orlando City Walk. We're getting a look here at the Hot Dog Hall of Fame. It's not open yet, but if you can see what I'm seeing, it looks like it's about to any day. And guess what? It is. Universal has promised that the Hot Dog Hall of Fame will open by the end of June. Um, and it definitely looks like it, like I said. Now, if you don't know, the Hot Dog Hall of Fame is a restaurant that will serve, of course, hot dogs that are inspired by, there will be different variations of hot dogs inspired by ballparks, baseball ballparks all around the United States. And if you know anything about hot dogs from around the United States, there are a lot of different kinds. <laughs> from Chicago to New York uh, to Philadelphia, wherever, and um, so there's lots of variety. They have some ballpark-style seating here, as if you are watching an actual game. Here's a close-up look on where you'll actually get your food, the service counter. And as you can see, those three empty spots above the service counter uh, look like they're going to be for TV screens, which will act as the menu boards. Here's a wider shot of the seating area itself. It looks like you'll have the option to sit over in those ballpark seats like you saw before or under this canopy here. Here's a rear view of the seating area, seating and standing area. It's a pretty large area. And if you saw before, you'll see that there was a TV screen where I would imagine they'll be playing some games. Um, the seating areas also have plenty of speakers, so you'll get surround sound when they are playing baseball games in the area. All right, now, before we leave uh, City Walk, I just wanted to leave this area of City Walk. I wanted to get a look at this nightclub area during the day. Now, if you've ever been up here, you'll know, and as you can see in this picture, this area is very, very desolate during the afternoons. Not much at all goes on around in this area until the sun goes down and these nightclubs open up. They are of course closed until uh, sundown, sunset. Uh, Fat Tuesdays of course is closed. This is where you get your alcoholic slushy drinks. I think this opens up around four or five and what we're here to see mainly is the Vivo Italian Kitchen. Now we're going to get a look first here at the front, and then we're going to move on to the uh, outside seating. But first, before we head on in, uh, just a look up at the construction walls. They're still up for Cowfish, which is going to be above the Vivo Italian Kitchen. And I would imagine we're going to get a look at uh, Cowfish in either next week or the following week. But anyway, here we go, taking a look at Vivo outside, the outdoor seating, you know, some very durable setups here with concrete slab tabletops and stainless steel chairs, complete with some minimalistic foliage and decorations outside. We're going to go on and step inside and take a look at the main dining room here. Again, some stable... Uh, some sturdy setups as far as the tables and chairs go. Here's a look at the bar. Uh, there's a ton of alcohol on that bar. A lot of wine up top and plenty of liquor uh, dispersed throughout the middle and the beer. We'll get a look at the beer selection tap and bottle in just a minute here. I wanted to point out these cage like structures around the booths. Uh, simply because you can see similar setups over at the uh, Antojitos restaurant. I wonder if that was a theme they're going through, going for uh, resort-wide, just these cages around the booths here. You see them in other restaurants, but you see them at Universal now. Uh, just another look up at the bar here. And then uh, I wanted to talk about the design, the interior design for a minute here. 
to me, it didn't seem like there was any concrete rhyme or reason. It's very abstract, kind of trippy. Um, lots of ingredients and phrases plastered up on the walls throughout. You can see an abstract painting here. And the phrase semolina up there on the wall. Moving on, we're going to take a look at uh, one of the setups. Pretty much all of the tables up in the front of the restaurant are set up just like this. Pretty simple. Nice family style. Uh, the kitchen, as you can see, is open view, so you can see the cooks cooking just as you would in a macaroni grill or something like that. Here's a look at the back section of the restaurant. Now, up front, uh, let's talk about this for a second. Up front, the atmosphere seems like it's more open, more family, uh, more casual, and the bar up front has a lot more liquor than the bar does in the back, and we'll get a look at the bar in the back in just a second. But this is the back area, and it's more, um, more sit-down, more formal, it seemed like. Here's another look at the open concept kitchen and some uh, seating up there on the kitchen itself. Here, as promised, is a look at the beers on tap. Pretty basic. Um, they have two, I believe those are Italian beers, Stella and Peroni. And then, of course, your Blue Moon, Sam Adams, and Bud Light. Here's a look at some of the bottled uh, beers and wines refrigerated underneath the bar. Here's a look at some architecture up at the front of the restaurant. This is right next to the bar. Uh, a look at the hostess and host stand, pretty simple. And a close-up view on some of the lighting. Um, the lighting actually kind of reflects those cages that you see around the, um, the booth seating. And over to the right of your screen, too, there's some consistency with the, the light fixtures and the structures over by the booth seating. Over to the right of the restaurant, they have this little nook area with some uh, some hybrid booth slash chair seating. Here's that open concept kitchen once again, and from this angle you can see the back, uh, more formal sit-down area as well. This kind of just gives you a nice view of the entire place. Here's that back bar that I was talking about before. This one doesn't seem to be focused on hard liquor as much as it does on beer and wine. And there's back dining room. This is, like I said, is quieter, um, more formal, and larger tables back here as well, larger booths. It looks like you could probably fit six or seven people. The ones up front fit about four, maybe five. Some plates and more uh, design elements up on this back wall here. And one last shot of uh, charcuterie. And this long table back here is more for, obviously, larger parties. This table looked like it could fit about ten people there. Outside, of course, they have their sign indicating that Vivo is, in fact, open for those guests that aren't aware of its presence. And now, the last thing we're going to do in this episode is head actually into Islands of Adventure, over to Toon Lagoon, and I wanted to get a look at this path over here by Me Ship the Olive and uh, Popeye and Bluto's Bildrat Barges. We're going to cross over this bridge that goes over the ride path of Bildrat Barges. We're going to get a look at this quiet little path that they have on the outskirts of Toon Lagoon. I did an episode a few weeks ago where I took a look at the waterfront over at Epcot, and this reminds me of that, only because nobody really spends time over here, and there's there's a lot to see over here, really, as you'll see in these pictures, but this path kind of meanders around me ship the olive, but it, this was a Sunday in the middle of summer, and nobody was over here, and that's just astounding to me, because it's nice and quiet, a great place to eat lunch, and just get away from the bustle, which... You're going to find everywhere in Universal and Islands of Adventure and City Walk. So to find a quiet place, I think, would just be nice for anyone. That's why I was over here. I like it over here. 
but you can see this path meanders around um, and you get some pretty cool views of everything um, mostly look at the Hulk here and if you've ever seen a good picture of the Hulk I'm not claiming my picture is good it's definitely a good angle but if you've ever seen a nice good crystal shot of the Hulk my guess is that it was taken from this path over here another view of the Hulk as it splashes down into the lagoon there a view of mythos over in the lost continent get some great angles over here really that's why I was over here uh, you get uh, some unique views of Popeye and Bluto's Bildrad barges cool view of the olive itself that of course is the children's playground it's part of Popeye and Bluto they're actually considered the same attraction if you didn't know that a nice wide open space here um, in the back of the olive attraction this is a lot of space actually that they're not doing anything with and to have nobody over here even in the middle of a summer afternoon I don't know why they really need all this space they probably don't but back here you'll see some things like just some novelty decorations school of fish uh, over in the uh, lagoon there and then they have a setup of Popeye and Bluto Popeye and Bluto's yeah uh, mailbox back here the last thing is just some lighting that they have up in the trees, some string lights, and you'll see some of those uh, barbel pa barber pattern poles there. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week in Photo Finds. we got to look at Vivo and some things around Islands of Adventure that you may not normally see because it's so quiet over there. Until next week, thanks for stopping by, guys. Have a great week. Bye. Have fun.